Hello friends. Thank you for joining us again today. I want to start out with a name. Jesus. Jesus. It's something about that name, friends. Something about the name Jesus. There was a song, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's just something about that name. And it is, friends. It was something about his name. I think it was the way he lived his life. The way he lived, the way uh, that, that touched most people the most. You know, uh, no, one had, no one had ever spoke like him because no one had ever lived like him. There was something special about Jesus. One thing that sticks out to me the most about Jesus is his prayer life. Uh, the, his, the way he communed with his father. The way that he, that he, uh, uh, the way that he stayed connected with his father. The way he depended on his father. He relied totally 100% on his father. There's a picture in the Bible that I like to share in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, uh, Jesus' disciples, had, had, uh, they had been, they'd been out and about, and they walked up, up on Jesus, and what did they find him doing? They found him praying. And I don't think it's probably the first time. I think it's something that they found Jesus doing a lot. He was in prayer. And out of all the things that they could ask Jesus, they could have asked Him, Lord, teach me this, teach me that. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. There was something about the way that Jesus prayed. They'd never heard anyone pray like that before. Now, they'd been around, they'd heard the repetitious prayers. They'd heard the, the dry formal prayers. But Jesus, when He prayed, He prayed to, to His Father. He prayed the one that he that that he knew loved him, that he knew that cared. And and when and, and when they heard Jesus pray, they could also tell that Jesus cared about them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Wow, simply that true. And I want to start out here with a quote. E. M. Bounds is just like a this guy is, is, a, is one of the most solid uh, writers that you'll ever read about in prayer. And he, he, he makes a statement here that I thought, I said, I need to share this. He says this, he, talking about Jesus, he said little or nothing about how to preach or what to preach, but he spent his strength and time in teaching men how to speak to God, how to commune with Him. How to be with Him. This is the real meaning of the saying, the training of the twelve. Oh, wow, that touched me. He went on to say, prayer was the greatest factor in spreading the gospel. Friends, I want you to think about something. Think about the early church. What gave birth to the early church? Was it preaching? Teaching? Singing? No, it was prayer. What were they doing? What were they doing? What was, the, what was the disciples doing? They were praying. They were praying and gave birth to the early church. That's how powerful prayer is. Now, thinking about Jesus. Was Jesus busy? I don't think that you could find anybody on this earth any busier than Jesus. He was incredibly busy. You know, his life was, was so hectic. Uh, I want to make a statement here. Um, he was so busy that he did not have time not to pray. He just had to pray. Open up your Bible to Luke chapter 5 and verse 16. Luke chapter 5 and verse 16. When you get there in verse 15, to kind of give you some context, is that um, the report had went out. The word had went out that, that the Messiah had come. And he was healing people. And friends, just imagine if, oh, I don't know what town you live in, but imagine the biggest city where you live in and the word got out that Jesus was there healing. Do you think that he would have a crowd around him? Yes. He was just crowded with people day and night. And so that's what the picture is here. And then verse 16 makes this incredible statement. It says, so, because he was so crowded, because he had people all around him, it says, so, he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. You hear that? 
No, he, he had to do it. He didn't have a choice. Often, he just had to do it to spend time alone with God. He had to do that. Before he faced the multitudes, he had to go to the mountaintop to spend with God. Before he went to the crowds, he had to go to his Father. That's where he received his power. That's where he received his instructions because he was always about doing his Father's business. That was the very most important thing to him. Now, if Christ, the, sunless, the sinless Son of God, if he felt the need to spend special time with his Father, to recharge, to power back up, don't you know that we need it much, much, much more? Friends, in this fast-paced world that we live in, it's hectic out there, it's crazy. We need to connect with our power source, our life source. Now, Jesus, I love the way Jesus uh, encourages us to do this. In John chapter 15, verse 5. He, in verse 4, he, he paints a picture of a vine and a branch relationship. And he lets us know this is how it is. We have got to abide in Him. Abide in God. Stay connected to God. Uh, cling to Him any way we can. And then in verse 5, he says, For without me, you can do nothing. I love that picture there. It's, it's really, friends, all about a relationship. That's what it's all about. God created you for a relationship with Him. That's why you exist. There's a place in God's heart that can only be filled by you. You believe that? Yes, God loves you that much. When you look at Calvary, you see that God must love you a whole lot to go through what He went through just to spend eternity with you. You know, Jesus models this so beautifully in Scripture. Often, we see Him setting time apart to be alone with God. Time when every other earthly voice was hushed. Time when, when He could listen to the still, small voice of his, of his Father. We live in a noisy world. And friends, this starts young. You know, even, even with our kids, I mean, they, they've got the cartoons going or they've got a game that is playing that's going wide open. This starts very, very early. In most homes that you go in, there's either a TV or a radio or an iPad or some type of device opened up always to distract. This really is a noisy world. And all this modern technology... Well, it was supposed to free us up time. Has all this modern technology freed up your time, friends? Really, think about that. My iPhone, my iPhone, for example, this, this iPhone here has gotten so smart that it's working me to death. That's right. I could spend all day long, all day long reading and sending uh, text and emails, making and receiving phone calls. And then if I had any time left, I could always, ho always hop on Facebook and check out and see what you're doing. <laughs> That's right. And everybody else. Uh, and so this is a, such a busy, busy world that, that we're living in here. You know, by the end of the day, I am wore out, stressed out, or both. Friends, does your life feel hectic? Is it wide open for you too? In this fast-paced world, do you feel rushed? In this fast-paced roller coaster of life, Jesus is calling you today to slow down. Slow down. Take a time out. Friends, the most important thing there is in the whole world is a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing that could be any more important than that. One day you'll know that for sure. I just pray that you hear God's call right now. He says, slow down and be still so that you can hear my voice. Now, you know, I believe that that's how Satan's working today. He's getting good people just like you and just like me. He's getting us so busy that we don't have time for God. That we don't have time to even pray for our neighbor or our friend or do something kind to one of our neighbors. He keeps us so busy and so preoccupied. And you know why he does that? Because he knows, the devil knows, without Jesus, we can do nothing. We can do nothing apart from Jesus Christ. And He knows that. So, for Jesus, it was a must to set aside time each day to spend with His Father in prayer. Now, you might say, well, I don't have to set aside a, spe a specific time to pray because I pray all the, all the time. Well, that's good. And, and I think that you should do that. 
Uh, but your prayers are not going to be as meaningful all day long unless you set aside a specific time with God at the beginning of the day. Uh, to, to tune into His voice. To tune in. And if, if, if you just get up and you rush out the door, it's really hard to recognize God's voice above the crowd, above the, above the white noise, all the noise that, that's out there, all the chitter and chatter. But when you begin your day quietly seeking God in prayer, in His Word, it's like tuning in one of those old-fashioned radios, tuning in to God's voice, tuning in so you recognize that voice. And throughout the whole day, friends, I want you to know that, that God knows every landmine that Satan has planted for you. And when you're tuned in that voice, you'll recognize that voice whether to turn to the left or to the right. Or, or maybe call and check on Ted or check on Bill or Julie. That voice God would put on your heart. And I know that many times that God has uh, put that voice on my heart and I gave somebody a call just checking on, in on them and, and just offering a prayer to them. And they said, Pastor, that was right on time. I'm going through this or going through that. God wants to use us that way to help each other. He does that. You know, it's, it's, and it's, not, it's not really the length of time that you're spending with God as much as it is the quality of time. I'll give you for example, before I leave my home, every day before I leave my home, I get on my knees and I have prayer. And one day I, was, I, was, I had important church stuff to do and, and I'm on my knees in prayer and I said a beautiful prayer and I hopped up and I headed out the door. And God stopped me. He brought me back. Now that friend, friend, I want you to know that prayer probably was a beautiful prayer a month ago. But it was the same prayer that I was praying, and it was all right here. Friends, it's not, the, it's not the length of time, the quality. It's enough time for it to go from right here to right here. See, God wants your heart. He just wants to, to be able to speak to your heart. And He deserves your heart, and He loves you, and He loves to, to talk heart to heart with you. And so I had to come back in and just start talking to God until it went from right here to right here. That's what God wants. He wants your heart. We miss out on so much because we don't hear God's voice. Friends, God still speaks. We've just got to listen to Him. He is still speaking. But we've got to turn the volume of the world down. I'm so thankful that my wife Cindy recognized God's voice. Everyone else told her, you might as well leave Him. He'll never change. And it did probably appear crazy to stick in there with me. But because she was spending time with God, she recognized His voice. And she knew that God was putting it on her heart to fast and pray for me. And I praise God that she didn't give up. And I praise God for His mercy and grace that, to put it on Cindy's heart to, to pray for me. You know, every morning she would get up, 4.30 in the morning, have her Bible opened up and praying to God. Just like Jesus did. You know, Jesus did that. Go with me to Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. i got something else I want to share with you about Jesus' life, a prayer. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, He went out and He departed to a solitary place, and there He prayed. Now notice something. Notice here that Jesus not only set aside a, a specific time to pray, He also had a special place to pray. He had a place to pray, friends. Do you have a place to pray? A, a special place, a place where you connect with God in. A place that you can look back on and go, you know what? God has visited me here. I've got one of those places. You know, for a long time, for 20 years out of my adult life, I drank alcohol every single day. Every single day, it had a hold on me. It had a grip on my life. And when God first began working on my heart, what I would do is I would roll out of bed, oh, two or three o'clock in the morning, and I would get on my knees and I'd say, God, I'm in a rut. Would you help me? That was, the, that was the length of my prayer and the extent of my prayer. I didn't know how to pray anymore, but I was praying with my whole heart. See, God is not impressed by lengthy, long, repetitious prayers. He just wants to hear a heart. And I was crying out from my heart, Lord, please help me. Yeah, I'm in a rut. Friends, God heard me. I thought, for example, I thought that, that, uh, that alcohol was like a sleeping pill. And I didn't think I could relax without having it. And so I didn't think I could go to sleep without, without my alcohol. 
And I remember the first day that I went the whole day without drinking. Uh, and and I, I went to sleep like a baby. Woke up two or three o'clock in the morning and I rolled out of bed and got on my knees. And friends, I had a divine encounter with God. It's just like, it, it was just like He was just all around me, giving me a big hug. And I knew that He had set me free. He had put me to sleep like a baby and He woke me up praising Him. And I just praised Him for that. So I know that's a special place that God hears my prayer. And friends, if you, if you set aside time and you set aside a special place and you start praying, God will visit you there too. And you'll know it's a special place where He hears your prayers. So Jesus had a time to pray and Jesus had a place to pray. Now here's another thing that sticks out to me about Jesus' prayer life. This might shock you right here. Jesus often prayed out loud. That's right. And he also taught his disciples to do that. Remember back in chapter uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 1, where I started out, and I'll go add verse 2. The disciples had walked up upon Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Listen to what Jesus says. He said, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you notice that? He didn't say when you pray, think. Or He didn't say when you pray in your, in your head. He said, say. This was something He said out loud. Here's another example. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember that? In Matthew chapter 26, in verse 39, he said, and listen to this, this moment in time. He went a little further and fell on his face, talking about Jesus. And he prayed, saying, not thinking, saying, Oh, my Father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. And then, and then again a second time, in verse 42, and again a second time he went and he prayed, saying, Say, friends, he was crying out to his father. He was crying out loud. You know how I know that? Because the Bible says so in Hebrews 5, 7. It says, he went a little further. Uh, it says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries, vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Can you picture that in your mind, friends? If Jesus felt the need to pour out his heart, to pour out his soul, asking, crying out loud, Lord, asking for strength for the day. How much more should we? How much more should we? You know, why out loud, you might think? Well, why would Jesus teach us to pray out loud? Friends, do you ever start praying? In other words, you might have been impressed before. Well, I need to get more serious in my prayer life. I'm really going to start spending time with God in prayer. You know, I'm really going to start doing that. And you, and you find your special place or time and you start praying and your mind starts wondering. It goes over here and it wanders over there. And you have a hard time focusing in. Friends, when you pray out loud, it keeps you more connected. You're more concentrated. Your, your focus is more. And, and you, hear, you hear yourself and you speak. You're thinking about it. You're saying it out loud and you're hearing it. And, and I believe that's the reason God tells us to do that. It keeps you in focus. And so, you know, uh, now some of you, and I've had people come up to me. I, I was sharing this one time at a camp meeting and I had somebody come up to me and say, Oh, oh, pastor, we can't pray out loud when we do that. Satan and his angels... Hear, hear our prayers and then he'll come in and, and hijack me here. I can't do that. Friends, I want to tell you something. Uh, the last place that the devil and his angels, his evil angels want to be, is where a place where believers are praying. Friends, at the sound of fervent prayer, Satan and his angels flee. In the name of Jesus, there is no other name under heaven. There is no other name more powerful than Jesus. Satan and his angels flee, friends. Now, there's another thing that I want to share with you uh, uh, that, uh, about Jesus. Jesus prays for you by name. That's right. He cares about you. God cares about you. Uh, in Luke chapter 22, in verse 31, we get an example of this. Uh, it says, and, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan is asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you 
that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Picture this. Jesus said, Simon, Satan has asked for you. Satan wants to take you out. But I have prayed for you. Friends, Jesus loves you just as much as He does Peter. And He is praying for you right now. Jesus is praying for you. Yes, there's going to be temptations. There's going to be challenges in this life right here. But friends, right now, Jesus is in your corner. He's praying for you because He loves you. He's praying that you get this message. He's praying that you hear this message and that you will start praying because He loves you and He cares for you. He's calling you by name right now. You are on His lips. You are on His heart. What bothers you bothers Him. He cares. He's fighting your battles he, because He loves you. He's calling your name right now. He's interceding for you. How do I know that? The Bible says so. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says, Wherefore, He's able to save to the uttermost. That's what you're going through, friends. He's able to save to the uttermost because Jesus forever lives to intercede. He forever lives to help. He lives to help you. He lives to help those that want to be helped by Him. All you've got to do is cry out to Him. He'll never turn away from anyone crying out to Him. No matter what your life is, no matter what you've, your past is, no matter how many times you fail, friends, all you've got to do is cry out to Jesus and He can save to the uttermost, friends. The uttermost. You know, Satan wants you, friends. He wants to take you down. He wants you to fall. He, want, he wants your loved ones to fall. He does. You know, He's a master at temptation. He studied human beings for 6,000 years. He studied your ancestors. He knows just how to make you fall. But you've got one in your corner, friends, that loves you, that you can turn to, that will help you through any temptation that Satan could throw at you. Satan says to his evil angels, go get that man there. Go get that child right there. Go get that woman right there. Go get their daughter. Go get their son. Friends, the only hope that we have is Jesus Christ. Our, our family has no defense apart from Jesus Christ. I praise God that Jesus has revealed this to us today, that we can come to God, that we can come boldly to the throne room of grace, that we can come in our time of prayer, in our, pray, in our place of prayer, that we can lift up our loved ones, that we can call them by name, friends, that we can call them by name. You know, ministering angels we know, are waiting around the throne room of God, just waiting on the mandate of Christ to go work in behalf of those who have been prayed for. Friends, are you praying for your loved ones right now? Do you set aside time each day to pray for your loved ones? How much, how much is it worth? How much time is it worth that, uh, to save our family and to the kingdom? Friends, God has called us to be part of this prayer Prayer is a, is a way, is a channel that God has given us to change the world, to save the world. Through prayer, we give God permission to work in our lives. I know this to be true because I wasn't praying for myself. It was because somebody was praying for me that I'm here right now. I was so lost, so far gone that I was not praying for myself, friends. I didn't know how to. But because someone was praying for me, it gave God permission to work in my life. And I praise God for that. Somebody has got to pray. Somebody has got to pray for our loved ones. Somebody has got to do it. Somebody has got to tell Jesus. Somebody has got to call them out by name. Somebody has got to set aside time in place. Sacrifice time. Sacrifice maybe instead of watching uh, the news or, 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 or reading the newspaper or getting on Facebook. What would it be worth to save a soul into the kingdom? What would it be worth to, to cry out to God? And when you do, I mean, I could just picture when Cindy was praying for me, when, when she sacrificed the time, when she sacrificed sleep to get up and spend time in the Word of God, when she did that, I could picture tears running down Jesus' eyes because that was the way that, that, that He was going to reach me. Because in this cosmic, cosmic conflict, he couldn't force himself on me. But when Cindy prayed for me, when she claimed scriptures, claiming the Word of God for me and the promises, 
It gave him permission to work, and I'm sure that all heaven was rejoicing because of that. You know, God is so good. There are certain things that God wants to do. And He's laid these ground rules out for Himself. But He can't do unless we pray. Uh, the Bible says in James 4, 2, we have not because we ask not. Friends, when we pray, it gives God permission to work and do what He always wanted to do. You know, what would have happened if Cindy hadn't prayed for me? What would have happened? Friends, I wouldn't be here right now. It was all because of prayer. I am a product of prayer. I am. You know, what's going to happen to your loved ones if you don't pray? If you don't pray for them, who will? Who's going to pray for that neighbor down the street that doesn't have any family that's in church? Who's going to pray? Friends, God needs your help here. He needs boots on the ground. Who's going to pray for the lost in the community out there? Who's going to pray for the lost? Friends, God has chosen us to be intercessors, to stand in the gap, to pray for those that are hurting and lost. Do you have a time to pray? Do you set aside a special time to pray? Do you have a place to pray? You know, you might be thinking, well, Pastor, I want to pray, but I really don't know how to pray. You, you know what the, one of the most powerful ways you can pray? I, I'm going to say the most powerful way you can pray. Open up the Bible. Go through here and pray back the promises of God. Pray by, read the Bible, and as you go through the Bible, uh, pick out certain scriptures that, that, that you hear God speak in your heart, and you write them down and pray them back. I do that every single day. Not every day, but almost every day. Almost every day I do that. I'll tell you something else you can do. You can go to the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, right here in the middle of the Bible, here is full of prayer material. You know, a lot of times when I can't think of what to say, I go to Psalms, and I let Psalms speak for me. Psalms has just got a way of doing that. And you can go to the book of Psalms and you have a wealth of prayers. And you know what? By, by going to the Word of God and praying back the Word of God to Him, you're giving God the courtesy of starting the conversation. You're letting Him speak first. And you can never go wrong doing that, friends, when you, when you do that. Another thing you can do is get a prayer list. Prayer, I started on a prayer list. Prayer lists are so important. I had a prayer list one time. Uh, as soon as I got to a new church district, I, I asked the church to give me a list of names. And they gave me a list of names. Within a week, one of the persons on my prayer list contact, contacted me. And I, was, and I was, through that contact, I was able to, to form a relationship with one of the most incredible bunch of people I've ever met in my life. They were Indians. The American Indians, they were the, from the Bear family. It's quite possible that some of them could be watching today. I know that a lot of them are part of our church family here on Facebook Live. And I just want to praise God uh, for each one of you. And, and, but it was all because of a prayer list. I started a prayer list on my refrigerator and started praying. Now, I challenge you to do that and see if God would not bless. So, as I wind up here, friends, are, are you sensing that something is missing in your relationship with God? Do you sense God calling you to a deeper, more personal relationship with Him? Uh, are, are you sensing Him today uh, talking and speaking to your heart? Uh, Jesus is calling on you right now. He's knocking at your heart's door. He's putting on your heart to set aside time every day to spend with Him. He's, he's putting on your heart to find that special place, a place where you won't be distracted by the, all the things of the world, where you can shut the world out and you can tune into Him. Friends, are you willing to commit your life to Jesus Christ? Are you willing to? You'll never regret it. I believe it's not an accident that you're watching today because I believe that God is knocking on your heart's door. Maybe there's someone that's uh, in your family that He wants to use you to work a miracle with. It might be the neighbor down the street. It might be a co-worker. Friends, God wants to work a miracle in someone else's life through you. Friends, when we pray, it brings God into the equation. It brings Him into the equation. And He can work miracles beyond what you could ever think or imagine. I want to pray for you right now. Can I do that? 
I want to pray that God sets you on fire and that He uses you as a prayer warrior to change the world around you. I, I promise He'll do it. Just start praying. Pray, friends. Father in heaven, I lift up everyone that's watching this message today. And I believe, dear God, that it was a divine appointment that you wanted them to watch so that you could hear uh, you, so that they could hear you speak to their heart, that you're calling them into a closer, intimate relationship with you, that you want to show yourself strong through them as they pray for others. I pray for the Holy Spirit's anointing upon them, and I pray for angels from heaven to be sent to help them. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming soon. And the best is yet to come. God bless you. Bye-bye.